Und In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, welcome to St. Michael's Hugh Moorfield on this Trinity Sunday. And lovely to have our four parishes together on a fifth Sunday of the month. And as well as thinking a little bit about the Trinity this morning, I thought as we're starting to edge closer to what may come our way in June, reopening some things, getting a little bit more back to normal as days go on, thought I might say a little bit about the future of our churches and the way we might approach that as we open up with a target really of September for getting things settled back fingers crossed, into, uh, into a new pattern for us and uh, bringing back the life that we know from our parishes. From, gosh, it seems like of old, a few years back. But anyway, a very warm welcome today as we worship together. So as we come to worship, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may both be lucky and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and together confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand? Whilst we can't sing it, we can still praise God in the words of the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, 
you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. In our collect today, we let us pray that God will help us remain true to our faith. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for our first reading. The first reading is taken from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received a spirit of adoption when we cry abba father it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Apologies to you at home um, who lost us for a little while there. I think they're back. Well, a new world is dawning, we hope. We have at last, at long last, a little bit of early summer with us. And we can hug, we can meet in slightly larger groups, we can visit family. And perhaps when June comes, well, the promise of opening up will come even more so. We shall see. But I want to ask this morning a question about whether we are ready for the change that comes with the future. And if you're anything like me, the answer is probably, well, not really, if I can avoid it. I'm gonna tell a few stories. Um, I shall retell the story about Kodak. If, you, uh, if you've had your parish magazine, you'll have seen my musings on Kodak already. Kodak in my childhood were a constant presence because it was they who supplied and developed the film from our cameras and gave us those Kodak moments, the moments where we captured the happy family occasions, the significant life moments. And on film, they were recorded and developed and printed for us, except their business was destroyed by the digital camera. And if you've read the article, you will know who invented the digital camera. Perhaps with some surprise, it was Kodak. But Kodak thought our business is film rather than our business is capturing memories. And so they missed what they were about and their business stumbled and fell. Well, the reason that's come to mind this morning is not just about the changes that are facing the church and our churches, but also Trinity Sunday. I've been thinking about those poor disciples and what they had to go through. They were, they were all good Jewish folk and they, they knew their faith and their religion and they had an almighty God on high whose name could not even be written down in full or said fully. That's how sacred God was, you could not go near. And then all of a sudden they had with them a rabbi a teacher who not only said we can name this God, but we can call him Father. Or in fact, the word he used was Abba, which is, which is rather better translated as Daddy. So from this distant, untouchable God to Daddy was quite a leap, quite a dislocation of, of what was going on inside in their faith. And, and then this rabbi said, not only can you call God daddy and be intimate with God, but you can look at me and see God as well. Oh gosh, he's come even closer, God incarnate. That's quite another change, quite another step along the way. Last week, we celebrated Pentecost, the feast of the Holy Spirit, when these poor disciples who'd taken God out of the heavens and brought him close and even closer, we're now told that God is spirit and will be with you and within you, closer even than your own breath. Uh-oh, it's change again, and were they ready for it? Well, there was some adjustment. There needs to be some adjustment when things change, and uh, sometimes, actually, we need to adjust simply in order to hold on to what we have, because the reason Jesus was teaching as he did was the faith that had been held by people was becoming something which distanced and separated God from them in a way that had never been intended. So it was a renewal of the faith they already had. It was a change in order that they could hold on to what was already there. A couple of years ago, um, I learned that I'd been running wrong. 
I, I was, I discovered what it's something this is called a heel striker. When I ran, I landed on my heel. And as my knees got a little older, the vibrations that sent up my leg became a little bit harder to deal with. And I found that I couldn't run so far. The distances were getting shorter and shorter. I had to change the way I was running and land on a different part of my foot in a different place in my stride. And in time, I discovered actually I could keep running and I can now run further than I've been able to run for years and years, not because of my fitness, but because of my knees, which are still getting older. Um, but I had to change what I was doing in order to keep doing the same thing. That change took about two years. Every time I went running, not only did I have to think about every pace that I took to begin with, and slowly it settled into my mind that this is the way I do it now. But also I found that different muscles that I was using in different ways hurt and hurt painfully. Change does not come easy to us, but it has been worth it in the end. And my third story, I've done Apple and I've done my knee, I've done, I've done Kodak and I've done my knees. I shall do a third one now and I've given away the punchline, you know what's coming. There was a company whose name you do not know, who made computers. They were a smaller niche company that built computers for you to have on a desk somewhere to do a few calculations. And there are many companies like that and some have gone out of business and some still struggle along, but this particular company understood what it was they were about. And you can't guess who it is yet. But I think the, uh, the sense that led to their ability to change and transform and be successful is captured in the way that the company's founder recruited the man who was going to be their chief executive. He was recruiting a man called John Scully, who was at the time working for Pepsi. He was the boss of Pepsi. And uh, they had a long conversation. And at the end, our nameless founder, who may or may not have been called Steve Jobs, said to John Scully, he said, look, at the end of it, it comes down to this. Are you going to keep selling sugar water for the rest of your life? Or are you going to come with me and change the world? It's quite a sales pitch. And... It captures, I think, what it was about Apple that's enabled them to change and to thrive because Steve Jobs didn't see Apple as a company that made computer boxes. He saw them as a company that used technology to connect people. And that works for computers and it worked for iPods and it works for phones and it works for Apple TV and it works for whatever the next, I'm not, this is an advert for Apple. I'm not a big fan of them as it happens, but they've got something right. They knew what they were about and that was using technology to connect people. Now, what about us in our churches? What is it that we do? There are different ways we could sell it. Here's one way. We hold church services. We have readings from the Bible, and we sing songs accompanied by an organ, sometimes. Um, and we do that because we want the world to be changed. How does that sound? Because it sounds, sounds a bit Kodak to me. Or we can turn it round. We believe in a changed world where every person is honoured. And we meet, sing, and learn together on the way, which is why we meet in church, online or midweek or together. That's a bit more Apple. And I hope it sounds a little bit better because we come here, not because we've always come and that's what we do and we make film like Kodak, but we come because we believe in the change that Jesus came and promised to those that he taught, in the change that the Holy Spirit brings from within 
in the change that's always been offered by God the Father. There's plenty of places around in the world today that offer and celebrate human spirituality. Not just in church, you know, it's not hard to find. Yoga is for many people more than just stretching and bending. It's a nurturing of the human spirit. Mindfulness continues to grow and grow as a practice in all sorts of places and in all sorts of ways at home and at work, in schools, in all sorts of places. Self-help books proliferate. Shamans are becoming a thing because people want to be connected to their spirituality and to whatever they call God. Kodak couldn't change in a changing world. Can we, as churches, change in a changing world? Can we go through what the disciples went through, those series of dislocations, in order to keep doing what they'd always been doing, but in the way that was suitable for that time? Can we put up with the hurting muscles of running differently as God's church? Now, I said I was going to talk a little bit about the future of the church, but to be honest, I don't quite know what it's going to look like. What will our church look like in 10 years time? I do not know. I don't think Steve Jobs knew what Apple would look like in 10 years time as he was going along the way, but he knew what it was for. It was about connecting people to one another through technology. Church is about connecting us through our spirits with God, our maker, and with one another. It's that that we must hold on to. And in the days to come, as we are able to sing again, perhaps we'll sing and do our services slightly different. Perhaps we'll continue using our online resources in ways that are fresh and new. Perhaps we'll meet at different times, I don't know. But all these things need to move along and change a little as we go in order that we remain the same, remain the same in that we celebrate the life of the spirit, which Paul spoke of in our first reading and which Jesus spoke of, of being born afresh, being born anew, being born from above, if we are to hold on to the life of the spirit. Amen. Stand and declare together our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, 
and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray. <laughs> Father, we give thanks for the wonders and mysteries of creation. We thank you for the life and for your love. We ask you to bless the nations of the world as they strive for unity and peace. We remember all who work in the caring for our planet, all who work in conservation and in the growing of our food. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Jesus, you are our Redeemer. You gave yourself in love for us. We come to give our love to you. We remember in your presence all who lack any knowledge of love. We ask, Lord, that in a changing world, you help us change our church to follow you. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. we thank you for our homes and all the love and acceptance uh, that is there. We thank you for our community of churches, our congregations and our school at Martin. We pray for those less fortunate those for whose life is oppressed and home doesn't mean love and protection. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray, Lord, for the sick and the suffering, be it in mind or body. Lord, be with them as they go through their ordeal. We take a moment to remember those who are known to us. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. holy and blessed Trinity, three persons and one God, we thank you for your love, which is eternal. We thank you for the gift of personality. We remember in your presence, friends and loved ones who have departed from us. May they rejoice in the fullness of life eternal in your presence and in your kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you all please stand? Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of God be always with you. And also with you. So we share a sign of peace with one another, near and far. <laughs> Yeah. 
author is prepared. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God. We stand for our prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your holy church, acclaim you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty. And so, with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we speak forever of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. 
He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, mm -hmm. so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. We sit or kneel for the Lord's prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have your sins. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have your sins. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I will the word, and I shall be. Body of Christ. Blood of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Mm -hmm. 
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith that we may know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Just a few words before we conclude of new beginnings. First of all, congratulations to those, if congratulations is the right word, who have been elected church warden in the last few weeks. Um, a huge thank you to those who've given service over the years and to those who are embarking upon the next year's service as church wardens. Uh, COVID regulations, they can't all gather together to be sworn in by the Archdeacon as per usual, alas. Um, to our advantage, it means that we can, we can swear them in in our parish churches. Um, so we will be doing that over the next month or so, uh, each in their own parishes, which is excellent. Um, other new appointments, after a long, long wait, we have a new bishop of Stockport and a new Bishop of Birkenhead. And if I was terribly organized, I could tell you their names. Um, they, they have been appointed and they've been touring the diocese the last few days. They were announced a couple of days ago. Um, Bishop of Stockport is coming from Leeds Parish Church and has a name, but I don't know what it is anymore. Uh, have a, keep an eye on our app and on social Leeds media. Minster. And that will, and Sue knows because she's- Leeds better. Minster. Leeds Minster. Sam something or other. What did I say? Sam something or other from Leeds Minster. Um, which, is, which is great news. Um, what else? Change. Bit of, a, bit of a stretch this one. I'm going to try. Marriage legislation has changed and the way we record marriages in church has changed. And therefore, I need a volunteer on Thursday morning to return all our registers to crew because I shall be away. If anybody can take a drive from the vicarage down to, to crew register office on Tuesday during the day, that would be enormously helpful. Do grab me afterwards and volunteer yourselves. And uh, last, last but not least, um, just uh, on, on the things I was saying about changing the way we do things, um, you will all be informed if any changes happen, but I'm, I'm hoping to have a meeting of all the PCCs together sometime in July, just to think about how we work through things, do things a little bit differently. Um, and any way that affects us, or we'll certainly be letting you know um, as the conversations go on. And Carrie's waving me because I forgot something else. I said, well, I think I said Tuesday. I may have actually said Thursday. You said both. But I meant to say Tuesday. <laughs> so if you can help, please, please let me know about this coming Tuesday. Uh, in the meantime, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>